Now listen, it's happening all over the world, all right? People are putting stuff on everything. You did it when you were a kid. Notebooks too bland with the 80 sheet page that you gotta hand me down when there was 34 pages left because your big brother used it before you. Happened to me. All right, scribble some S's on that bad boy. Give it a little bit of flavor, all right? Got your first laptop for college. You bet your ass that bad boy is getting a dumb $3 Amazon sticker slapped on the front of it. If you got a MacBook because you're rich, you put a little sticker of the Apple getting eaten. First car, you put some decals, baby, right? All right, face tats. When you're rap, I don't know if that works. Okay, there's another thing out there that's getting done up like the bedazzled pants you had back in 2002. Wheels, all right? Except they aren't rhinestones, they're acronyms. I'm Alex, Alex at a fine Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about all those little symbols, certifications, and random numbers your wheels may have on this very, very next episode of... Who? Why? Let's go. And if you're just jumping into this video, I need a better clap dance. Hi, don't forget to subscribe so you keep making banging videos like this. If you haven't yet, that would be great. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. If you're watching this during November, we've got Black Friday deals running all month long. If you're watching this in December, I'm sorry, I hope you have a great month, all right? Oh, and I almost forgot, if you're looking to learn a little bit more about our brand new wheel brand that we just launched, Artisa Art Formed Wheels, be sure to check it out over at artisawheels.com or over at fitmentindustries.com. It's something we've been working on and we're really, really happy about it. I mean, I'm really excited, it'd be really cool if you could check it out. Back in the day when automobile companies were first entering the world in things like Germany, Japan, United States, Mexico, and probably a few other places, these guys and gals were trying to source all of the parts for their cars internally. They'd make the carriages, the steering components, and all of the good stuff that came together to make some of their very first cars. And over time, that included the wheel manufacturing, and some even tried to make their own tires. It's actually true. But just like all good things, it continued to grow, and the supply to keep up with the manufacturing of these cars just didn't match trying to source everything internally. This is what caused automobile manufacturers to start reaching out to aftermarket suppliers of companies like Wheels to make their stuff. Take out the BBS logo, slap a BMW one on there, and you're good to go. It was pretty much like the common thing of copy the homework but make it OG. That became the norm. But because the aftermarket wheel community is like all other types of markets, everyone started to try making the wheels with quite literally no idea what they were doing because there was a need for a product and everybody wanted to make money, all right? Wheels from that time period would be heavy. They'd break easily, and they were the wish equivalent of what the OE manufacturers really wanted because they were selling it to hundreds of thousands of people. It made it tough for OE manufacturers to pick wheels. And then it got worse when the wheels began being sold well to people like you and to people like me. I mean, back in the 80s and 90s, you would find countless unknown wheel companies, like countless unknown wheel companies that found a factory that would make anything for a $10,000 mold down payment and they were selling wheels for 400 bucks a set for a set of four, all right? This, there, was, there was like an outpour in the 70s and 80s and definitely into the 90s with aftermarket wheel quality issues. And they were literally everywhere. This was during the same time that prominent and prestigious companies like BBS, NK, Volk, SSR, and others were making aftermarket wheels that were tirelessly put through stress testing and it was getting all muddled, all right, by Uncle Joe at the four spoke wheel that looked like the parallelogram Elon drew a couple years ago to make a truck. Like, it was really causing a lot of people to get weird about aftermarket wheels. That is what caused the entry of what's called wheel certifications. These certifications would begin to establish a quality control to the mass influx in companies that would produce wheels. Now, even though wheels are just practically giant chunks of metal, they can still be fragile chunks of metal, all right? They're sensitive, emotional. You can say mean things to a big boy, they're still gonna cry, okay? The certifications would spawn from countries like Japan, Germany, and even Mexico for a brief period of time to help consumers understand if a wheel met a certain quality control check of some kind and met the minimum standards of the country or of the company. You'll commonly hear or see things or notice stamps like JWL, VIA, TUV, ISO, and more. Now here's the basics of the symbols or acronyms you may have on your wheels, where they came from, and why they're there. 
And now remember, just because some don't have it doesn't mean they aren't certified. Just like some may have the stamp on their wheels, they're still not certified. They're just lying. And it's like putting a Type R badge on your non-Type R car. JWL, the most well-known certification is the Japan Light Alloy Wheel Standard. and was one of the first certifications set in stone by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transportation that must be met for wheels to be sold in Japan. JWL wheels. While lots of individuals get stoked if their wheels have the JWL stamp, it's actually pretty standard safety certification. Impact testing, radial fatigue testing, marketing and material auditing, and other standard use cases are what's gonna allow a wheel to have the JWL testing on it. Most wheels have JWL testing. In fact, I would argue almost every wheel is gonna have a JWL testing on it, whether it's stamped onto the wheel or stamped onto the wheel box. There are very, very, very few companies these days that don't meet the JWL testing criteria to sell a wheel in Japan. VIA, sometimes seen with the JWL stamp and sometimes without, stands for the Vehicle Inspection Association, okay? This one is the one that audits the JWL. The VIA is a third-party inspection group in Japan that actually independently tests the wheels that are JWL verified to ensure they meet the requirements of JWL plus a little bit extra, okay? That is important. You can have JWL but not VIA. And if you have VIA, you gotta make sure it's actually searchable. On some of your older wheels, you may have something that says JAWS. You're gonna wanna grab some brake cleaner and a rag to wipe off the S, cause that's actually JAWA, or J-A-W-A, -A, which stands for Japan Light Alloy Wheel Association. Founded in 1972, JAWA's responsibility is to ensure that quality and durability is again maintained and met in Japan. It closely follows along the wheels that are JWL and VIA certified. Not only that, but JAWA also assists wheel companies in the security of their wheel designs to try and minimize or reduce potential copycats. They act almost as an auditor of sorts. They try their best, they don't always get it right. And just like all things German, they took something like a wheel certification and over-engineered it to ensure perfection. Enter TUV, TUV, all right? It's Technischer, Techni Technischer Uber Waschens Vieren. Started in Germany, the TUV now has locations nationwide to allow testing of wheels to see if it meets their stringent requirements, all right? Truthfully, TUV is one of the toughest ones actually out there, more than JWL and VIA or Jawa. Just to get involved in TUV, you need to be ISO 9001 slash 2000 first, which is a bunch of hoops and stuff to jump through in terms of just the quality of materials that you're using. And then you can go into TUV testing, which is a whole different gamut of itself. You may also notice stampings on the back of your wheels, such as numbers, two rows of boxes, random letters, and sometimes a name or an initial. These are often added by factories within the mold production process to just easily recognize where and when a wheel was made in case a recall or process needs to take place. Very similar to the number marks on a tire. You'll see wheel companies stamp the wheel offsets within circles cut in half with the letters ET before it. That's just your offset. You also see something commonly enough like 2000 or 201122BM. That's usually just common to the diameter of a 20 inch, 11 inch wide wheel with 22 offset and black and milled. It's just literally, it's the skew. So going back to certifications, do they actually matter? And it's important and it's honestly a really tough question to ask yourself. Back in the early 70s and 80s, there was enough truly fake and unsafe wheels running around the world where wheel certifications helped people like you and people like me recognize if wheels would be safe to put on your 280Z or your Mazda RX-7. But as time passed, lots of the older testing just really isn't that crazy anymore. JWL and VIA are safety precautions the same way that seat belts keep you alive in case you get in a car crash. You may not really think you need the certifications now, but if something were to happen, you'll be glad that you did. These certifications still carry a heavy importance, but they just aren't talked about as much as they used to be. And that's mostly because they become such common industrial requirements. The only exception would be the TUV, which is a tough nut to crack and will continue to be until the entry of testing the wheels gets easier or the price to give the wheels to TUV to test becomes cheaper, in all, in all honesty. One of the greatest opportunities you'll wanna make sure you kinda of check yourself before you wreck yourself would not actually be with your one-piece wheels, it's multi-piece. The horror stories of multi-piece wheels falling apart, cracking, bending, or just straight up tearing isn't as 
talked about as it probably should be. I mean, mono box fail, sure, but a lot of failures you'll actually see in multi-piece wheels, and there's a reason for that. While there's still testing such as the FEA or impact testing on multi-piece wheels, there's a lot of new, non-experienced companies that jump into multi-piece wheels without having their designs tested, and the wheels end up breaking in half going down the highway doing pretty much nothing. And that's because the wheel designs aren't fully tested the way that they should be. Always make sure the wheels that you're buying are at the very least tested, even if digitally. This can easily be seen by either visiting a supplier's website or just asking us, all right? The toughest thing and the biggest thing to remember is that a lot of times with testing and wheel certifications, there's gonna be times where it's not shown on the product itself. Old wheels used to have the stamping while a lot of new wheels do not. That doesn't mean that the new wheels don't have it. You're just gonna find that information likely online. And if you don't know, drop a comment below and we'll let you know. So that is everything that you probably need to know about the buttons and the things on wheel certifications. That's why some of these bad boys got like 9,000 numbers on their lip and stuff like that. Best place to look, their website. Second best place to look, you can actually search up the registry to ensure that they're actually spitting the truth because that's important. JWL, VIA, all that sort of good stuff, ISO, we're tested. Be sure to check us out over at fitmanindustries.com if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension. And of course, let us know what you want us to talk about next. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. We will see you later. Peace.